Psalms 119, verse 43. It says, And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. That I like to say, call a my Yahweh al Also, Damana said, was a GMS and honestly, Wakim. Peace and bless you, brothers and sisters, and listen to the church of the firstborn, the hopeful elect, call a my Yahweh al And like King David said, man, never take the word of truth out of my mouth, ever. Ever, man, because why? You'll just be in the congregation of the dead, like the rest of our people, the rest of the two thirds that's here in Babylon and other parts of the world, man. Only thing that matters is the truth, man. Without the truth, aka how shy, then, like the scripture says in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, you were born in vain, man. Right? You were just dust, as we read in Second Ezra, the eighth chapter, man. But the scripture says, within that dust, you have some gold. That's those who know the truth, man, that have the truth. And that's hoping in the judgments, hoping in the prophecies, hoping in salvation to be redeemed. All right. We're prisoners of hope. And um, you know, I was listening to Apostle Gabar video. He went into, you know, points of suffering, man. The importance of suffering, man. And that, you know, we didn't come here to Babylon to, to live it up. To be comfortable. This is a prisoner sentence. That's why the scripture says, well, I just mentioned we're prisoners of hope. Right? The scripture says we are yet in this day in our captivity. We're still in captivity. We're still slaves. We're not a sovereign or free. I see you Jakes are voting for uh, these two demons. Alright? Uh, Kamala Harris and uh, some fucking uh, Donald Trump, man. Still trusting in your enemy, man. Oh, he's going to turn around the economy. He's going to get us out of these wars. We ain't thinking like that, man. We want to see the destruction of this place, man. We hoping in the judgments, man. Right? And then going into this video, let's probably all about Shemel Shah. A lot of men lack the patience. Right? The patience. That's why they fell out, man. Because the prophecies didn't happen when they expected it to. And they lost hope. Man. How, man? Right, you have to be patient in this thing. Scripture talks about you have to be patient in, in the time of suffering, man, because you want to attain that future glory with Yahweh Shah. Let me get that features the first chapter. So, like they say in the world, man, um, patience is truly a virtue. Right? The society don't teach patience. Okay, everything is instant gratification. Right. Let me get Ephesians chapter one, verse 13, though. It says the truth is opposite. All right. We're being perfected. We're being purged. All right. Let me get Ephesians chapter one, verse 13, though. It says in whom also he trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation. All right. And you holding on to the truth is going to lead to your salvation. That's what it says, buy the truth and sell it not. After you get this truth, hold on to it, man. Never let it go, all right? It said, whom also after he had believed. So when you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The wisdom, knowledge, and understand the spirit of the Mashiach of promise, man. But you know the promises that goes along with what? The kingdom, salvation, immortality. All right, it says, which is the earnest of your inheritance? That's our inheritance. Because Yahweh Shai said, all power was given into him, heaven and in earth. And he said, if you endure, you're going to sit with me in my throne. So that's our inheritance, man, as sons of the power. Right? The entire earth, the, the, its possessions, everything, man. All right, but we have to endure, though. You have to be patient. All right. The scripture says, um, let's read on. It says, until the redemption, right? Until the redemption of the purchased possession. Who's the purchased possession? The elect, the saints, the church of the firstborn. Those that believe on Yahweh Shai. We were purchased by what? His blood. That's what scripture says. You are not of your own. Right? Your body is the temple of Yahweh Basham Al Shah, man. And we were purchased, we were bought with a price. 
right? That's that price was Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. See, straight on it says, "Unto the praise of His glory." All right, we just talked about what His glory is. He already received His glory in the heavens. He didn't receive His glory on earth yet. All right, so we're we're waiting to be um, re fully redeemed. Okay, we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, but we're looking to be saved and delivered, man. Right? But in order to attain those things, in order to get to that, we have to be patient, man. And patient, actually, we're patient. Patient, it goes back to the Latin word, I think, pats, patior, which means to, um, to suffer or to bear. Right? So your tolerance to suffering has to go up, has to increase. As you get closer to Yahweh Bashim Al Sham. That's why the scripture says that things are written four times are written for our learning. You look at the apostles, the things that they endure, you look at Yahweh Shai, the things that he had to endure, man, in order to sit on the right hand of Yahweh. Right? Look at the things the apostle Paul had to endure, man. From being stoned, stoned, flogged, chased, shipwrecked. Okay? imprisoned the apostle paul went through a lot man and we know in secular history he got beheaded by nero but he say he know as a crown in the book of second second timothy his final testimony he understood that a, th a, th um, a crown was laid up for him for all the hard work and dedication that he put in his truth and his faith he said he labored more than all of them the apostles and he did man so the, his tolerance for suffering was extremely high because he was patient and he never stopped believing, man. Okay, that's why the scripture says, let me get Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. This is what he said. So call on my Yahweh Shah, man. You know, pray for the Yahweh Shah to increase your patience, man. Right? And you, it's foolish to fall out in this hour because... The prophecies are happening, man. Yeah, things may not happen the way you want, but it's happening. She says, though it tarry, wait. For it was surely, we all want the, the, uh, the RFID to be mandatory this week, man. <laughs> but we got to wait for things to play out. Right? Certain things got to play out, man. You know, we know they got to crash the system. They're going to do other things. Maybe cyber attack, this, then, the third. Okay, civil unrest, civil warfare, disease warfare. All right, come down with holy hell and then bring forth the B system at the same time. WW3 gonna be happening, so you have to be patient, you have to wait, man. But it's gonna come to pass. That scripture says, as he receives 10 verse 34, it says, For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Knowing yourselves that he have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Hmm. Like he also said in uh, was it Hebrews 13, 14. He said, here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Right? That's that substance. Which ultimately is going into that new heavens and that new earth. That's what we're looking for, man. All right? They said that you lay in heaven. See? Because what our our life is hid with Yahweh Shah. He's gonna bless us when he makes the second coming, man. And he said, Listen, you guys had compassion of me in my bonds. Because he remember he got bounded at Jerusalem and then he was brought before Caesar. Okay, he was brought before the Festa Fetus, Felix, Agrippa. Then he had to go before Caesar, Nero, where he got beheaded, man. All right, so it says what? Let's read verse 35. Cast not a, away, therefore, your confidence or your faith. Don't cast away your faith, man. Because that's when you're truly dead, man. All right, Scripture says, and in that same Hebrews, it's impossible to please Yahweh Bashem El Shah without the gift of faith. And faith is a gift. All right, verse, read on. It says, verse 35, which have great recompense of a reward. And we talked about the reward already. All right. Yahweh Shai told the apostles. Um, he that followed me to regeneration. You're going to sit on 12 thrones. 
judging the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, and you're going to receive a hundredfold for all the things you missed out on this side, man. But like we're saying, the key to all of this is patience, man. Right? Being able to suffer, being able to bear these things, being able to bear your cross. Right? Let's read on. It says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of the Most High, what's the will of the Most High? Like Yahweh Shai said, to feed his sheep, to feed his lambs, and to feed his sheep, to believe on his son. All right? Keep the commandments of the Most High, and above all, have faith in Yahweh Hashem El Shai. That's his will. He might receive the promise. Man. Okay, and like we talked about the promise, we're hoping in the judgments, the destruction, and being delivered and reigning with Yahweh Shai. That is the promise. But like the Apostle Paul said, you have need of patience, man. We have to wait, man. But now we're in the fulfillment era, okay? Prophecies are happening. Prophecies are jumping off the page. Things is about to go. Things can go down at any given moment in Babylon, man. That's why you have to stay on your watch. Because we are the watchers. We're the porters. All right? We're blowing the trumpet. We're sounding the alarm. What's taking place here, man? And we're patiently waiting for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. Right, so the scripture says, man, you know, do not cast away your confidence. Don't cast it away. Don't let nothing get in the way you serving your Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. But the scripture says the sin do beset us, the flesh. All right. You know, Yahweh Shah talked about some guys fall out because of the cares of this world. You know, you have the, the coming persecution. All our faith is going to be tried in the hour of temptation. Right? To try you to see if you truly believe, man. Especially when they make that RFID mandatory. Okay? When people have to live off grid. Right? Get grabbed up in concentration camps. Tortured. Beheaded. Are you going to have that same level of patience and faith? Or are you going to be able to bear that in that time, man? See? These are the things that you got to ask yourself, man. All right. The Apostle Paul said, listen, when he spoke to him, Agabus told him, um, um, he told him, um, if you whoever have this girdle, you're going to be bounded and, and brought in Jerusalem. And Apostle Paul said, listen, I'm not only to be bounded, I'm ready to die for Yahweh Shai. So that's the mindset that we all got to have. Man. Right. Like Yahweh Shai said, he that, um, Matthew 16, 25. He said, he that, uh, uh, he that love his life shall lose it. And he that lose his life for my sake shall find it. Yeah. All right. So let me get um the next precept. All right. So patience, man. See, let me get Matthew. To, there's a precept once again. John, the second 11th chapter is a good precept. Right? Why guys fall out, man. Lose that patience. But above all, like Yahweh Shai said, many are called, but only a few are chosen. Right? And that, that few is called the elect. But get John chapter 11, verse 10. Let me get the book of James also. Scripture so talks about you have to have the patience of Job. Right? And Job caught hell, man. He had to witness his own kids dying. His children, I should say. Right? He lost everything. He got sick. He was getting plagued. But he still had patience. And he even said, Though he slay me, I will still serve him. No matter what. Man. And he got greatly rewarded. Man. Right? But let's get John chapter 11 verse 10. What did Yahweh Shai say? Let's get John chapter 11 verse 9. This is a little parable. He said, Yahweh Shai answered, Are they not 12 hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, man. because he seeth the light of this world, right? Which, yet, yeah, in the carnal sense, talking about the sun, right? It's, it's, it's hard for you to fall in certain pitfalls and traps because the sun is out, 
right? But he's the light of the world, man. If we keep our eye focused on him, man, we won't be able to fall into certain snares or temptations. The scripture calls that walking in the spirit. Now do you walk in the spirit? Remain occupied in the prophecies. Like I started out with King David said, you hope in the judgments, man. That's how you walk in the light. You keep your eye single. All right. Verse 10. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there's no light in him. All right. Yahweh Shai is not in him. And what he means you walking in the night, he's walking in the flesh. Right? The cares of this world, man. And that drowns the word, like Yahweh Shai said. So you you running after the flesh, you pleasing the flesh, you drunk with everybody else out here, man. See, and like we said, guys who lost that patience, that's what they that's what happened to them. You know, they got fed up, man. They were tired of suffering for Yahweh Bashim El Shah, tired of being ridiculed, right? Things ain't happening for them. Well, that's what you signed up for, man. It wasn't going to be easy, man. Okay? Like they tell you, man, Um, nothing that's good uh, comes easy, man. Nothing, man. All right? There has to be some sort of hardships or struggles or hurdles in a way for you in order for you to attain that glory, man. And that's how Yahweh Bashim El Shah set it up. And it shows you that them guys never really truly believed. Because it tells you that in 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter. Things were made easy for Adam. But when he fell, the Mosai said, I'm going to make it difficult now. If we were to get back to the tree of life, get back to salvation, get back to eternity, I'm going to make it extremely difficult, man. But the angel also told Ezra, that is the condition of the battle. This is a battle. Right, we were put on this earth to fight, man. right? And we can't lose our patience or our faith. <clears throat> but let me get um the book of James, man. Right, and the scripture says, man, if you um, um Proverbs twenty four and ten, if you faint in the day of adversity, that means your strength was small, man. It means you didn't have faith, man. Okay. That's what the apostles that asked the Lord, increase our faith. All right. Let me get the next precept, though. All right. So we can't feign this thing, man. Scripture says, don't be wary and well doing. You have to keep fighting. All right. Have to, man. It's an absolute must because our life, as well as our salvation, is on the line. And if you fall out this thing, man, you're going to be beaten with even more stripes. <laughs> All right, so let me get the book of um, um oh hold on now Isaiah the fortieth chapter. Hold on, did not the scripture says he's gonna give power to the faint man? Let me get the Isaiah the fortieth chapter, man. Yeah, because we in this flesh, you know, we get you know, scripture says I show he wore the saints of the Most High, and we worn out in this place. But the Most High gonna give us power though, man, if we endure, man. Right? He promised those that wait, he was going to bestow them with power, man. Let me get the Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And I'm going to get what Jonah said. That just came in my mind. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It's a classic precept. But they that wait upon Yahweh Bashim El Shah, so you have to wait, man, shall be renewed their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Bless them with power, man. But the scripture says they have to wait upon Yahweh Bashim El Shah. Okay? You got to hope in the judgments, man. You have to believe in his timing, man. All right? So while we're here, we're going to fulfill our vow. And finish the work out of Ratzazah. You get that what Jonah said. Because he said that beautiful prayer in Jonah the second chapter. You all know the story. The Mosai sent him out to do a mission. And he didn't want to do it, man. All right? He tried to go to Turkey, man. The Mosai jacked his ass up. All right? 
he got swallowed by a, a fish man okay so or, um some verses say the whale all right but he got swallowed and um you know he said a prayer man while he <laughs> oh man let me read um let me get that actually join the second chapter while he was in the fish's belly he said a prayer man let me get to the point he said jonah chapter 2 verse 7 he said when my soul faints within me i remember you how much now shot and my prayer in unto thee into thine holy temple they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy this is jonah but i will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving i will pay that i have vowed man Right, so we made a vow, we made a promise when you put on the garments. Now, no matter what darts the enemy throws, Satan, because he's the adversary, scripture says he, um, he's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Nothing, man, was supposed to separate you from the love of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So Jonah said, Listen, man, you know, um, let me read that again. He said, I will pay that because he was a prophet. I will pay that I have vowed. All right. You sent me to Nineveh to do it. Listen, man, you get me out of this situation. I will be more than willing to go to Nineveh and to prophesy, man. All right. Because why? That's the vow we all made when we came into this thing, man. All right. It says salvation is of Yahweh Bashem al Shah. So when he said that, what happened? And Yahweh Bashem al Shah speak unto the fish. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Dry land. Now, he was more than willing to finish, man. Because this is the ultimate gift. Being called by Yahweh Bashem al Shah, man. Come on, man. All right? What did the angel tell um, uh, Toby? Be not slack to praise him. Now, as a matter of fact, I'll read that and I'll close this out with that. Toby chapter 12, verse 6, man. So. We can't lose our patience, aka our faith. We're not gonna cast away our confidence. You know, we're gonna keep pushing Adam Ratazab, man, to the end and be saved out of Ratazab, man. It's about being saved, it's about being delivered. Right? Tobit chapter 12, verse 6. This is the angel Raphael speaking to Tobit and his son Tobias. And he took them both apart and said unto them, Bless the most high, praise him and magnify him. And praise him for the things which he have done unto you in the sight of all that live. So we're supposed to praise Yahweh Bashim al Shah all the time. Magnify him, man. That's what we do these video lessons. That's what we go out on the highways and edges. Okay? We're trying to magnify Yahweh Bashim al Shah. All right? It is good to praise the Most High and exalt his name, not Christ. All right? His name is Yahweh the Father. His son's name is Yahweh Shad, man. We exalt in his name. That's the name that we come in. And honorable to show forth the works of Yahweh Bashim al Shad. And we show forth his works. Right? Like we said, going out there and doing the work, edifying, condemning, right? Breaking down the parables and the mysteries, the dark sayings. Right? Being skillful teachers in the word, man. That's showing forth the works of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. And walking in the footsteps of, of Yahweh Shah, man. Being ambassador to Yahweh Shah. Alright, let's read on. It says, Therefore, be not slack to praise him. Don't be slack in praising Yahweh Bashim al Shah, man. Alright, because like he said, this is honorable, man. The highest honor. All right, he said it's honorable to reveal the works of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. So you can't cast away your patience, I mean, can't cast away your confidence. All right, so you know, hopefully, this lesson was edifying. Let's say, calling my Yahweh Bashim al Shah, Shalom.